speaking of of decades of time that can elapse, you know, where people think one thing, but that's not necessarily the case. I want to talk to you about cholesterol. Sure. Um, you know, for all of my life, I mean, even to this day, uh, other than what I independently know, you know, if I was just listening to my teachers and my doctors growing up, um, you know, cholesterol is bad. You don't want your cholesterol to be too high. You don't want to eat too much cholesterol. That is the folklore that I've been taught. Most people have been taught their entire lives. Where does that idea come from? And what is cholesterol doing in our uh, brains in particular? So cholesterol is a perfect example of a uh, an, uh, of a really vital molecule uh, uh, that every cell in the human body requires in order to uh, function, develop properly. Um, that has been demonized because uh, because it is only found in animal foods. And so uh, what 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 happens with in the plant versus animal debate is that is that essential and vital molecules that uh, we cannot, we literally cannot live without are, uh, because they don't exist in plants, plants don't need them, plants have a different type of cholesterol, that, that they do need cholesterol, but a totally different kind. Um, if you're trying to, if you're trying to place the blame for human health problems on animal foods, you need to point the finger at specific molecules uh, in those animal foods that don't exist in plants. And cholesterol is a perfect example of this mm. because the type of cholesterol is different. So you can say, oh, well, animal, let's see, we think animal foods must be bad. We've, we've heard that they're bad for us. You so start from the premise, animal is bad. The premise, Therefore, exactly. you look for something in animals, but not in plants. <laughs> right. So cholesterol uh, is, a, is a critical molecule in every cell membrane. And it's not, it's not just a structural component. It's also used to build other kinds of you know, really important molecules in the body. Uh, it, it, structural integrity, it's also uh, important for certain uh, parts of brain, cell, uh, a, a certain thickened or stiffened areas of certain cells, uh, uh, area of a cell called a lipid raft, which guides cell, nerve cells to their destinations when the brain is developing. Cholesterol does many, many important things. So, uh, and it's so important that almost every cell in the body is capable of making it itself. So if you don't eat any cholesterol, never fear, <laughs> you will still make plenty of cholesterol. Your body will still be full of cholesterol. Your blood cholesterol can even be too high if you never eat a molecule of cholesterol or you never touch an animal food in your entire life, because mm. so important, we make it ourselves. So, and the brain is especially interesting in this regard because the brain is particularly rich in cholesterol. Uh, it's, it's one of the co most cholesterol rich organs in the whole body. So, uh, and not a single molecule of the cholesterol inside your brain comes from your bloodstream or the food you eat. Every molecule of that, because cholesterol is too big and bulky to cross from the bloodstream across the blood-brain barrier and into the brain. Hmm. Yet the so brain needs it so much, it makes every single molecule itself on site from scratch. And, and why is it making it? What does it actually get used for by the neurons? Every cell membrane, so every cell in our body has a membrane. Uh, and so every cell membrane requires cholesterol for structural integrity and for developmental function and, and many other purposes as well. Uh, you also need cholesterol to build hormones and other types of, uh, and, and certain molecules that are important for uh, the mitochondria to generate energy. So you need cholesterol as a fundamental building block of membranes, hormones, and certain other uh, components. So you must have it. And if your cells don't contain cholesterol, they will fall apart. Hmm. So this is not optional. Mm -hmm. uh, and the brain, the brain is full of, it, it is the reason why the brain has more cholesterol than uh, any other organ in the body is because it's full of membranes. Mm -hmm. And the myelin is just very tightly wound membranes wrapping around and circulating uh, 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 and uh, in insulating the circuitry in our brain. You certainly don't want to skimp on myelin. Mm -hmm. So, so cholesterol is a, it's a, component of cell membranes in all of our cells. So it's, a, it's an important uh, structural integrity molecule. It's also used as a precursor for various hormones, which coordinate very important biological changes throughout the body. Yeah. Um, but I've been told my whole life, cholesterol equals heart disease. High cholesterol is always bad. If I eat cholesterol, isn't it just going into my blood and then clogging my arteries? 
Yeah, so that that is what we've been led to believe, and still most people even to this day believe that even though uh, major organizations, including the American Heart Association and and the and the USDA, uh, have taken back that uh, warning uh, many years ago, that uh, the uh, the dietary guidelines essentially back in 2015 said uh, uh, dietary cholesterol is no longer a nutrient of concern. So essentially, you you can't overconsume it, and the reason why is you know our bodies aren't just empty buckets that you pour cholesterol into until it spills over we regulate how much cholesterol we absorb from our food if we're not getting enough we make enough we ma we make up the rest if we are getting enough from food then we make less and so we absorb we absorb only what we need and so there's that myth uh, is is easy to to dispel but heart disease is fascinating because Yes, you will find cholesterol inside the plaques of uh, people who have had heart attacks, but that doesn't mean that the cholesterol caused that heart attack. Heart disease, first and foremost, is uh, in, an inflammatory disease where there has been damage to the lining of the blood vessels, and otherwise the cholesterol couldn't uh, worm its way in. So the, the all heart disease begins with damage to the endothelium or that that uh, first layer of that, that lining of uh, uh, cells that separates the bloodstream uh, from the interior of the of the wall of the artery. So damage and inflammation happen first. Uh, cholesterol ends up there um, for lots of different reasons, but it's not uh, it is not the the culprit. Mm -hmm. Speaking of inflammation, so I want to talk about fatty acids, the different types of dietary fats. So you got saturated fats, mono and polyunsaturated fats of different kinds. <clears throat> Let's start with saturated fat because it sort of goes with cholesterol in the sense that I've been told my entire life, don't eat too much saturated fat, don't eat too much cholesterol. Those two have sort of gone together in many people's minds, even to this day, they're synonymous with heart disease. What's going on with saturated fat? How much is too much? What is What is the basic biology there? Yeah, so two important things to say to that. So one is that this is another great example of trying to find a difference between plant and animal foods and then hanging the the uh, the blame, placing the blame of the, you know, the theoretically dangerous the, the theoretic dangerousness of animal foods on a molecule that's more that's easier to find in animal foods than plant foods. Plant foods do contain all foods, all plants and animals. Foods are plants and animals. All plants and animals contain a mixture of saturated and unsaturated fat, just different different ratios, right? And in fact, the only animal foods that contain more saturated fat than unsaturated fat are dairy products. If you're looking at beef or pork or chicken, or you will not find an animal food except for dairy that is higher in saturated fat than unsaturated fat. Hmm. So, so if I'm eating a a steak with a uh, uh, you know some fat on it uh, it's actually got a quite a bit of monounsaturated fat in it not that much different or sort of you know directionally similar to something like olive oil can i think of it almost like that yeah so so uh, olive oil is mostly monounsaturated fat but it's got polyunsaturated fat and it even has some saturated fat all fats are mixtures mm -hmm. and i think the the one of the big differences um you know between plant and animal foods is that most plants are very low in all kinds of fat because plants store their energy as starch mm. lumps of starch typically underground like a potato or a tuber or a root we cannot afford to do that because if we did that, we'd have to be dragging big lumps of starch around us we go. <laughs> Very yeah. inconvenient, you know, at the airport, you'd have to pay extra, you know. And so, you know, we carry, we on purpose store energy as saturated fat. Saturated fat is light, it's compact, it's flexible. You can store lots and lots of energy in a small amount of space because we need to move around in the world. We can't afford to be tied down to the ground by big lumps of starch. <laughs> and so- and we make that saturated fat on purpose in our bodies, even if you don't eat any fat at all. If you eat more carbohydrate than you need at any given moment, you will turn every extra molecule of that carbohydrate into saturated fat on purpose because that's how the body prefers to store it. So how could it possibly be bad for you? So if... If plants like to store their energy as glycogen, uh, excuse me, as starch, um, a, a form of carbohydrate, why are why do I see so many 
bottles of vegetable oils. Where are all these vegetable <laughs> fats coming from? Ah, uh, yes. So I'm glad you brought this up. So uh, yeah, so so there are some plant foods that are a little higher in fat. So if you're looking for protein in plants, you usually look to the grains, beans, nuts, and seeds. If you're looking for fat, you also look you look especially to the nuts and the seeds. And there are certain fatty fruits, avocados, uh, olives, uh, and um, coconuts, and, and palm fruit. These are fatty, fleshy fruits. Um, we're not talking about the seed of the avocado. The, the pit, of course, has some fat. All pits and seeds have fat. But the actual flesh of the fruit, the avocado itself, uh, and when you throw the pit away, there's quite a bit of fat in the avocado. Most fruits are not like that, but the avocado and the olive and the palm fruit are exceptions to that. Most plants are very low in fat. So if you're trying to, uh, if you think, oh my gosh, well, you know, it's not safe for us to cook with animal fats because animal fats are dangerous. How, wh what do we wanna use to cook with? What do we wanna use to add to our pies and muffins? How are we gonna fry things? How are we gonna, how are we gonna saute things? What are we gonna do? Um, uh, well, we're gonna have to go to the, go to the plant foods, the seeds, where there is definitely uh, more fat in the seeds than most other parts of the plant, uh, we are gonna have to extract that and concentrate that fat and put it in bottles and cans and things like that so that we can get, because otherwise it's pretty hard to get much fat out of plants. So uh, in order to do this, it's actually very difficult to wrangle fat out of a seed. Uh, if you try to do this at home, good luck trying to make a bottle <laughs> of oil out of a, a pile of seeds, it's very difficult. You need a factory. You need 15 chemical steps and you need an explosive solvent called hexane uh, and uh, to remove all the odor, all the toxins uh, and all the flavor from, from, from those seeds and, and concentrate that oil into a bottle that's odorless, tasteless, shelf stable, um, plant-based, heart healthy, uh, cholesterol free cooking oil, which is really just an industrial waste product of, uh, of uh, originally from the agricultural industry.